Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of modeling with kinetic and potential energies. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it costs you nothing and it really helps keep this channel growing. Okay, so this is the problem that we're gonna do today. Uh, we're gonna concentrate on the first situation and then we're gonna put the problem back on the screen for the second one. So um, you're very curious to know more about how springs behave. So you sneak into the DO room at night and set up various experiments with springs. At home, you explain your findings to your roommate using physics 7a models. You may neglect all types of friction in this quiz. This part is very important. So first we, uh, first we enter two identical same spring constant springs as shown in the picture. We perform an experiment where an uh, where we initially compress spring one with a block at distance d from equilibrium. Then we release it and it compresses it against uh, spring two. Do you observe the maximum compression of spring two larger, smaller, or equal to d? Explain your answer using an energy interaction diagram and energy conservation equations. Okay, so as you can see, I have my uh, first scenario over here. We're going to work on this left side of the page first, and then we're going to go ahead and do the second one. We have to do an energy interaction diagram and figure out whether... So basically, the block is released from this spring, which decompresses, and then hits this spring. This spring gets compressed, and it gets compressed a distance that I'm just going to randomly call x. Problem is not saying you should call it X. I'm just deciding that's what we're gonna call it. So let's just go ahead and do the energy interaction diagram because the problem requires us to do it. So let's just do it step by step as usual. We've been doing this all day. So let's just go ahead and do it. The system in this case is uh, just gonna be the spring And let me tell you why. I think that a lot of people could possibly be inclined to also put the block here. However, let us be reminded that energy is a state function, which means that only the initial and the final values matter. In the case of the spring, its initial velocity is equal to zero. And in, in the case of the block, I'm sorry, in the case of the block, the initial velocity is equal to zero and then once it hits the spring and it achieves maximum compression when you think about it it hits and once this thing hits a maximum compression what happens to the block it stops so basically the block goes from being stopped to being stopped uh, that basically means that um we don't really have any change in energy, so it's not really necessary to add it. If you want to add it, that's fine, but it's not really going to have an energy bubble because it goes from zero to zero and there is no change in height. So that's, we're only going to, the only thing that's necessary is the spring, I think. Okay, so now uh, our initial. Well, let's just spring one, spring two. Spring one, it's compressed distance Z. Spring two, not compressed. And then final, uh, spring one, not compressed. Spring two, compressed a distance x. So now we do the actual bubble. This is a closed system because we have no friction. So the, this is a closed system. We only have two bubbles, one for each spring. So spring number one, spring number two, the potential energy of spring number one gets lost. 
because the uh, compression, oh well, the delta x, well, let's just call it x, goes down, and the potential energy of the second spring goes up because the compression goes up. Initial here is the final is equal to zero. Initial here is zero. Final is equal to x. So now to the equation, one term per bubble on the left side of the equation. So change in potential energy due to the spring one plus change in potential energy due to spring number two is equal to zero. If we substitute the equation for the uh, spring, that would be one half um, k final minus initial. So final zero squared minus initial plus one half k um, final, which is x squared minus initial, which is zero, is equal to zero. The springs are equal, so they have the same k. So the one half and the k's go uh, go away because it's equal to zero. So you can just eliminate them, send them to the other side, multiplying. And now we basically have minus d squared plus x squared is equal to zero. This means that x is equal to d. So final answer is um, spring to get compressed same distance as spring number one. Final answer, just because both of them are the same per energy conservation rules. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the uh, second part of the problem. Let's just put it back on the screen to read it. For another experiment, you build a ramp such that spring number one is at a height h, higher than spring number two, as depicted in situation number two. As before, you initially compress spring one with a block distance v from equilibrium. When released, the block slides down and then compresses spring number two. Is the maximum displacement larger, smaller, or equal to v? Explain your answer using an energy interaction diagram and energy conservation equations. Okay, so basically we just do exactly the same. Uh, we just have to put another diagram up here and then figure out the answer. So our system, in this case, it's going to have three components. So spring number one, spring number two, and now I'm also adding the block. Why am I adding the block? Because even though the block goes from zero to zero in terms of velocity, in this particular case, the block is experiencing a change in height. So because the block is experiencing a change in height, we do need to add it and it is going to have its own energy bubble once we get to that. So the initial value for the springs, same as in A, I don't want to write it. Initial value for the block is um, at a certain height. Final for the springs is going to be same as in part A. So uh, spring one not compressed, spring two compressed the distance x. And then for the block, height is equal to zero. So now we do our bubble close because again, no friction. And now we're going to have three energy bubbles. So we have spring one, spring two, and now we have the block. Spring one is going to be the same as this B E spring goes down because the compressed distance goes down. For the second one, it's gonna be the same. This goes up because the spring gets compressed. So I'm just copy pasting this part. I 
you can see where this is going, block, potential energy, gravitational, goes down because the height goes down, your initial height is equal to h and then your final is equal to zero. So now we have to write the new energy conservation equation, which is going to have the two original terms. But now we're going to have a third one, which is the block oh, PE gravitational block is equal to zero. I'm going to substitute values over here. So this is one half k final minus initial one half k final for spring two minus initial for spring two plus m g final which is zero minus initial which is h and this is equal to zero like this i cannot cancel the uh one halves and the k's in this particular occasion because uh, I will have this term over here, um, but let's just go ahead and take out the zeros. So this is one half k d squared plus one half k x squared plus m g h is equal to zero. If we solve for x, um, x squared is equal to Um, I'm just going to skip some steps, but feel free to do it in your notebook. So this is d squared plus 2mgh divided by k. Yep, looks about right. And so this is x, and then uh, this is x squared, I'm sorry, and then x is just... Um, Let's just take it out. It's just the square root of this. So this is x. So this is obviously more than d because we have this additional term. So final answer is that spring 2. So final 2 gets compressed more at the end. Why is it getting compressed more? Well, because, you know, this is a closed system, energy has to be conserved. On this one, whatever this one gave, this one took, and that is still the case over here. However, we have a third energy. The block is also losing potential energy, and it has to go somewhere. Where does it go? Well, into compressing spring two more. And uh, this is basically how we do it. And, you know, this is the end of the problem. So I hope that you have found this problem useful. If you did, please make sure to leave a like. I want to help making videos for this channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video.